I bought the most expensive blow dry brush I could find on Amazon for $190. And then I put it up against one of the cheapest, most popular blow dry brushes out there, the Revlon One Step, to see if you really get what you pay for. There were some pretty huge visual differences between the two that even surprised me, and I can't wait to show you. If you don't know me, my name is Chris. I own a hair salon called Live Love Locks where we test out products and bring the best ones to you. I make these videos because way too many people struggle with their hair and I don't want you to be one of them. The T3 Airbrush Duo is $190. It's the top of the market right now and supposedly it's the best you can get, but we'll be the judge of that. Thank you very much, T3. The T3 also has 15 different heat and speed combinations. And I'll be honest, you really don't need that many. If they want to put it in there, that's totally cool, but nobody should be paying extra to have 15 different combinations. It's just overkill. But what it does have that the Revlon doesn't, and I'm excited to try this out, is an ion button. And I'm a huge, massive fan of ions and any blow dryers or blow dry brushes. Ions are basically like rain -X on your windshield. It causes the water to spread out evenly on your hair, so it dries faster and more evenly so much better. Ions also make your hair much smoother and softer. And I'm a huge fan of smooth styles because they last longer. That way, when you wake up the next morning, your hair still looks good instead of being a frizzy mess. But before we move on, I know somebody in the back of the room is about to yell. You do know that the Dyson Airwrap is actually the most expensive blow dry brush, right? Yeah, technically it's $600. It is more expensive, but it has a ton of different attachments and the blow dry brush attachment is not any good at all. Both of these brushes are better than that. That can't be. I paid $600 for my Dyson Airwrap. It's the best. It's my favorite. It's super easy to get emotionally attached to things that we spend a lot of money on. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but it's not a good product and we can't let other people waste their money on the Dyson, especially when it's $600. All right, moving on, let's check out the Revlon One Step. This is one of the originals. This is one of the very first blow dry brushes and it helped kick off the whole blow dry brush revolution. It made it popular. Anyway, this model is super stripped down. It only has two heat settings, no ions, but don't sleep on it because a lot of times when it comes to hair, simple is better. All right, let me catch you up really quick just in case you wanna get these same results at home. We washed with our shampoo Soulmate. We left the conditioner in there for two minutes and we're doing my Trinity routine. So right after towel drying the hair, I just use a leave-in conditioner as the very first product to go on her hair as a base. That's extremely, extremely important if you don't want your hair to be super dry and brittle. You gotta use that leave-in conditioner. And then before we start blow drying, we need to use a heat protectant. And if we're using a blow dry brush, you wanna use a blow dry cream with built-in heat protection. Our model has medium hair, so I'm gonna choose Redken's Big Blowout to give her some volume and body to her hair. And I also wanna quickly remind you, do not blindly just pick the exact same products that I'm using here. I'm using this because this is good for her hair type. Remember, hair commandment number two, you must match your products to your hair type. If you wanna figure out which products are best for you, check the link in the description for my recommended product list. It has a hair type quiz. It'll tell you your hair type and exactly what to use. And before we move on, I just wanna stress that blow dry creams are not optional. You must be using it if you're using a blow dryer or a blow dry brush. They protect your hair from heat and using one of these without a blow dry cream is like running around with your eyes closed. It's going to give you terrible results. You'll hear people say, I damaged my hair or it came out super frizzy or why do I have these flyaways? Use a blow dry cream. So we're applying the cream from the bottom up and then we start rough drying the hair. And people will say, you need to get the hair 80% dry, but actually that's a really silly rule. Cause honestly, what is 80% dry? Can you measure it? Like, do you have a tool to be like, okay, this is 80% dry? You don't. And number two, everyone's hair is different. Some people should air dry their hair a ton. They should get it almost all the way dry. And then other people who start to frizz really easily should not be air drying their hair at all. So what you really wanna do is just keep air drying the hair evenly until you start to notice these little flyaways. You'll see these little flyaways that are starting to look like frizz. And as soon as you start to see those, that's when you're gonna stop. Then you're gonna use a wet brush to start detangling your hair. And as you go over with the wet brush, all those little flyaways are gonna go completely away and the hair is going to look normal again. And as you're detangling the hair, it's gonna automatically spread the product evenly throughout the hair. This is the quickest, fastest, easiest way to do it. All right, so let's get into it. The left side of the hair is gonna be the $40 Revlon One Step, and the right side of the hair is going to be the $190 T3 Airbrush Duo. It's time to see what type of results we're gonna get from these guys. As I start here, one of the things that always gets me about the Revlon is it tends to swirl air everywhere. And as that air blows around, it knocks the hair off the brush, which gives you much worse results. You need the hair to stay on the brush and under tension to get a really good result. That's how you get it sleek and shiny. If it's not on the brush, if it's not pulled tight with tension, you're not gonna get good results. 
All this hair that's not on the brush is basically just getting air dried. It's going to be frizzy and wavy, and it's not going to have the same nice polished texture that the rest of the hair is. On the other hand, the T3 only has this one little slit where the air blows out of, so it's much easier to keep the hair on the brush. It ends up with a much smoother, sleeker result, and you don't get all these little flyaways, so good job, T3. I also want to show you something else. For anybody that has frizzies around their face that tend to do crazy things and don't want to lay down, or maybe it's a cowlick and the hair just doesn't do what you want it to do, the T3 has a really small barrel. It's really good at getting all those little guys around your hairline because it'll stay on the brush and actually do what you tell them to do. And I just want to show you the Revlon one more time. All those little flyaways aren't long enough to wrap around that big old barrel. And there's air swirling all over the place, blowing it off the barrel, so it kind of comes out like a mess. It's really hard to get those little hairs around your face with the Revlon. Line. The smaller barrel on the T3 also makes it much easier to get the roots, and roots are really important. If you don't get your roots well, things start to go downhill really fast. Sealing your roots to make them shiny and smooth makes your hairstyle last way longer. If you don't get your roots really well, you kind of get this frizzy, puffy thing going on. And the thing is, that's contagious. So if you have that frizzy up here, it's going to travel down the rest of your hair and ruin it. So please, make sure you do a good job of getting your roots. All right, so we finished the side, so I'm gonna turn the model around and see what we've got going on here. And one of the first things that you'll see here is the Revlon side actually has a lot more flyaways. And people ask me all the time about flyaways. How do I get rid of them? And number one, yeah, technique is a thing. You need to use good technique. And as you get better, you'll have less flyaways just because you get better and more experienced. But I also wanna stress that there's a pretty good chance that your tools are actually letting you down. I know you aren't talking about my Dyson Airwrap again. I told you it is my favorite and it's the best. Okay, but how many others have you used? How do you know it's the best if you haven't tried any of the others? Well, I don't see any others that cost $600, so clearly it must be the best. With hair tools, you don't get what you pay for. The most expensive tools usually aren't very good. All right, back to our model here. We're gonna be doing the top sections now. When you're doing this at home, you wanna pay special attention to this top part because that's exactly what everybody's gonna see first when they see you. You can see when I first part the hair, it's kinda of all over the place and not very straight and you never wanna dry the hair like that. If you dry it when it's all over the place, it's gonna stay all over the place. You want the hair to be super straight before you start drying it. So you can see here, my first couple passes are literally just getting the hair super straight and going in the same direction. I also want you to see here that I'm not just randomly running the brush over the hair just to get it hot. What I'm doing is I'm pulling with tension the entire time. The entire point here, the whole strategy, is to get the hair nice and super straight with tension and then lock that shape in with heat. If it's not pulled tight, you're not doing it right. Anytime you don't have that tension, you're not keeping the hair straight, you're basically air drying the hair. The only difference between air drying and blow drying is the tension and pulling the hair straight. And right here, the model asked me a question that was one of the smartest questions of the year. I wish you could hear it, but the audio is all messed up because the blow dryers are kind of loud. The question she asked was, does it matter if you put the brush on the top of the section or the bottom of the section? It is such a smart question. If you keep the brush underneath the section, the underneath is going to dry way before the top. And then you're basically gonna have to wait for the heat to work its way all the way from the bottom up to the top. It's like making a pancake and expecting the entire thing to get cooked when you only keep the heat on one side. You're waiting for the heat to go all the way from the bottom of the pancake to get to the top of the pancake without flipping it. What's gonna happen? It's gonna burn, right? The bottom is gonna be black and the top is still gonna be soggy because you never flipped it. You have to flip it so you get heat on both sides. Hair is the exact same way. You need to put some heat on the top and some heat on the bottom to make sure the top or the bottom doesn't get too much heat. You wanna spread it out. And the thing is, it's not just healthier and better for your hair, it's also much faster because instead of waiting for the heat to go all the way from one side to the other, you just put the brush on the other side. You put the heat where the water is so much faster, so much healthier. All right, so we finished the top here. I turned the model around and I asked her what she thought of the way the hair looked and of the way the hair felt in her fingers. The one thing that really sticks out here is the amount of volume we got on the Revlon side, which is a real huge plus for all my fine haired people who struggle to get volume. There's two ways to get volume and the Revlon's way of doing it is through frizz. It sounds weird, but the frizz actually gives you volume. The Revlon didn't get the hair nice and smooth, so it won't lay flat. It kind of has this zigzaggy pattern, which makes the hair stack on top of itself instead of laying flat and smooth. And that's where you get the poof and the volume on the Revlon side. 
The reason you don't have nearly as much volume on the T3 side is because the hair is straight and smooth and it stacks evenly right on top of itself. It doesn't take up any space, so there's much less volume. All right, so going back to our model, you'll notice something really interesting, and that's that the ends look much better on the Revlon side. But how is that possible when we just said the Revlon side is much frizzier? How does that even make sense? The answer is that the T3 has a really small barrel, so you can't wrap that much of the ends around it, so the ends never get that polished. And the T3 also just doesn't get as hot as a Revlon, even on its highest setting. And that's gonna make a lot of people say, oh, thank God, lower temperatures. Do you know, lower temperatures are so much healthier for my hair. No, it's not. Lower temperatures are not necessarily healthier for your hair. Uh, yeah, they are. Haven't you read the marketing material that tries to get you to buy stuff with lower temperatures? The only time you can do heat damage to your hair is when your hair actually gets hot, not when the brush gets hot. Well, all I need to know is that a hotter brush means hotter hair. Simple. A hotter brush just means the water evaporates more quickly. Your hair doesn't actually start to get hot until the water's gone. What does that even mean? Can I get someone who speaks nonsense to come translate for me, please? Let's go over this really quickly. When you put heat on wet hair, most of the heat goes towards evaporating the water, not making your hair hot. The only time your hair starts to get hot is when the water is gone. And when the water's gone, you wanna stop anyway because there's no point blow drying hair that's already dry. So the temperature of the brush doesn't really matter. The temperature of your hair is what matters. As soon as you start to feel the temperature of your hair start to get hot, you're gonna stop, go on to the next section because it's dry. A lot of people get into trouble with these brushes because they keep using it on dry hair. They go over and over and over and get the hair hotter and hotter and hotter. They don't stop when the hair is dry. You have to stop or else you're gonna do damage. All right, it's time to give our final grades for these two tools. We're gonna to base it on five different things. Your roots, your mids, your ends, volume, and smoothness. The roots came out way better with the T3. The smaller barrel allowed us to get in there all the way up in there, so it was a lot less flyaways and it was much smoother. The mids came out so much better on the T3 side. You could literally feel it with your hands. The T3 side was soft and smooth. The Revlon side was frizzy and coarse kind of felt like, hey, huge difference. But this is where things kind of start to take a turn because the ends were much better with the Revlon. They were much sharper. The Revlon's higher heat and bigger barrel made the ends come out much better than the T3. The Revlon also wins when it comes to volume. You can see the massive difference in the two sides of her hair here. Yes, it was a little bit frizzy, but it still counts as volume. And lastly, when it comes to smoothness, the T3 blew the Revlon out of the water. The ion button, the ion setting made the hair so much smoother, really not even close. So the question is, given these split results, which one's better, which one should you get? And like most things in hair, it depends on your hair type. Let's go over it. If you have fine hair that's limp and lifeness and that really annoys you, I would definitely go with the Revlon. If you have frizzy hair, you're gonna choose the T3 because that's gonna get rid of the frizz and make your hair nice, straight, and smooth. All right, guys, if you're interested in the products that I use to get this result, don't just copy them. Go in the description, look at my recommended product list, take the hair type quiz, find out exactly what your hair type is and exactly which products would be best for you. And if you like heat styling anywhere near as much as I do, I highly recommend you check out this next video. It shows you exactly how to use heat protection so your hair never gets damaged by heat. Have a good one, guys.